Hey everyone, Paul I Sam. Welcome to another inbox review. Today we're going to be looking inside the Tamiya 124th Sauber Mercedes C9. So this is the latest box. Now this uh, came out last year. Uh, sorry, this year it came out actually. Uh, I've been meaning to pick one up for a while. Finally got one. Put it to the vote yesterday and uh, with a number of other kits for review. And this one won outright with double the amount of votes of any other kit. So... We're going to review it today, and this will be my next build as well. So looking forward to this one. Never built one of these kits before. Started one many moons ago, but never even rem remotely got near anywhere progress on it. So interesting to do this one and see what we can make of it. So let's jump straight in and go and see what we get in the box. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right then, so this kit was originally released in 1990. It was re-released in 2008. If you remember the black scheme with the circuit board on, and then recently released this year. Now, I've been meaning to get one for ages. Finally got one uh, a few weeks back, and it's a kit. I started the um, 1988 version, the Olympia one, with all the circuit board on it, back in about... 2010 i got it started it completely overwhelmed by the kit because i was only new back to the hobby then really and never completed it regret selling that one now because it's quite hard to get so when this was announced for re-release i thought i've got to get it and um we'll give it a whirl and see how we go so here we are wonderful tamia box art as usual love tamia's box art they very rarely disappoint um and this just looks absolutely stunning on this kit nice picture of the va twin turbo engine on the front obviously this has got photo etch part in it like the uh 2008 variant release did as well and it comes with cartograph decals always good to see on the tamia box on the side we've got a front and side profile picture of the car um on the other side we've got a bit of information about the car and unless you read japanese that's pretty useless for you the official mercedes um licensing logo there as well and the colors required uh which would be the main colors for the kit so lp70 which we may well use on the body ts26 uh semi gloss black xf16 flat aluminium and xf56 metallic gray so because this is a new boxing this is gonna have lp paints in it which is always good not actual paints but the call outs what the original kit called out for i am not sure um but obviously the original kit wasn't silver i don't think so i don't know anyway in the box it's one of the time you're smaller boxings if you're familiar with this size you'll know what i mean inside we've got clear parts two sprues there's three the body four five sprues with um the chassis and what have you we've got the bag of tires slicks and the poly caps which are standard with tamiya kits We've got the cartograph decals, we've got a window mass set, which is always a good thing to get, and the seatbelt material in there as well. And then a pretty nice photo edge set. Very cool, as well as the antenna bar there as well. I'm assuming not that what's that for anyway. Um, so always a nice addition to get some PE and the instructions and the sheet that comes with all Tammy kits now about tech tips, which, uh, yes, most of us are seasoned modelers. We'll already know. It's one of Tamiya's newer instruction books, which is a proper booklet rather than a pamphlet. So that's good as well. So we'll pop these bits to one side. And we'll deal with these parts first. So I'm going to grab the body shell first. There are staples. I'm not going to complain about the staples like I always do. So we'll move on past the staples, even though they're an utter pain in the backside. So body shell now the so 31 year old kit from tamia clean as a whistle a few wisps of flash inside the vents you're probably not going to see it 
but it is in there it'll clean up with the the back of a knife just whisked in there the rest of it perfectly molded nice panel lines no floors to plastic you've got the marbling in there where the uh, plastic's not during the molten plastic stage of molding no problems there at all 1990 on the underneath stamped onto the body at least tammy puts it underneath that on the top like some other manufacturers do and of course um the two halves one for the engine cover um so you're gonna have to cut these off and trim them up a lot of people might think about spraying it like this but you're just gonna have to touch up all these parts and where you remove that sprue gate at the top it's gonna leave marks so you're gonna have to separate it to paint it properly uh, but the body shell nothing wrong with that at all Nice and clean, crisp, perfectly molded. Typical, typical, typical Tamiya quality, which you uh, you can never fault. So let's get the biggest sprue. So this is the biggest one. More staples. Not going to moan. Not going to moan. Hate the bloody things. So this is our chassis and what have you. So chassis is pretty basic. Nothing in there. Uh, Really suspension on there. Uh, underneath is pretty flat by the uh, ducting through the back. So nothing really special to look at there. Wheels, pretty nice wheels on this one. They are pretty cool. I do like those, they are very nice. Uh, and then seat with molded in belts, which is never great. So it's a case of trying to put the belts over that, I think, and hide that because to get that out of there is going to be quite a bit of an awkward job to do. So, shame about that, Tamiya, that you did that, but it's what it is. Rear spoilers there. We've got subframes, steering arms, steering wheel. Uh, everything's molded. Typical, typical, typical Tamiya quality. Look at the window wiper for a 30 year old kit. No problems at all. Molding still top notch. I mean, do we expect anything less from Tamiya, really, to be honest? Not really. Our exhaust there, the manifolds, pipes, downpipes, auxiliary belts for the engine. Um, just all really nicely molded. It's a Tamiya kit at the end of the day. What else are we going to expect to see? Not much, really. This is the thing. Tamiya kits are great, but they can be quite boring reviews because they're just so damn good. Really are. So this needs some tricky masking underneath. The real car's probably got some carbon on here. There is a carbon set out there for it and I'm going to build this next. And I did contemplate um, carbon and it all get a detail set, but there's none out there at all. So we're literally left with the P that comes with the kit, which isn't bad. But I think we'll go over out the box build and then maybe if the P gets re-released, we'll buy the kit again and we'll go the whole hog with it, carbon it super detail it etc etc but i think on this one we're going to just go out the box so no problems there at all really like those wheels they're a very you know normal standard looking wheel but i just think they're quite a pretty wheel they look really good because i think they're in a gloss black uh, they are uh, matte black semi matte black so yeah no problems there last colored sprue so this is going to have all our engine in here. How detailed the engine is, I don't know. I have seen pictures, and it didn't look massively detailed. So I don't think we should expect a lot. It's a big old unit, though, the transmission. So we've got the cockpit here, a bit of detail in there. Not massive amount, but it is a race car interior. All different components, the steering rod, the shifter. Then we've got our wing mirrors there as well. This will be the bulkhead, dashboard, some more intakes, looks like suspension there, is it? Can't quite tell. Uh, and again, not, not much to look at really, crisply moulded. No flash, no issues, it looks like it'd be fairly simple clear. Some pretty wicked seams on some of the parts, but they're easy to deal with. They're not much of a problem. At all, I'm just trying to look for any flaws whatsoever. Like I say, other than a little whisper flash here and there, nothing at all. I mean, how many times has this kit been molded? So the molds are going to start to wear over time. Um, but it's nice to see this kit re released because the older kits are going for extortionate money. Um, I mean, pick this kit up for myself and like UMP. We've got them in umpretail.com that's four in stock right now. 
and I think, let me have a look as I did have the page up on my screen, they are $37.99 and the original kits are upwards of 100 now. So get the re-release, I'm sure somebody will release some decals as well. I will definitely grab another one of these because it's a cool car for sure. Uh, last sprue, other than the clear, and we've got the transmission and the engine. It's pretty basic, I've seen it built up, it doesn't look the best, it could do with some detail. Um, but it is there, it is an engine. Got our brake discs there, which are, again, not too bad. It is screaming out for a detail upset though, it's an older kit. So it could probably do with a detail upset, but there's literally none available I could see right now, especially in the UK. Uh, have a look further afield, I might find one, but I couldn't really. Got a radiator there, uh, more suspension components, turbos are there, which are... Yeah, they're not the worst turbos, they're not the best. They look like turbos to a degree, I suppose. Uh, detail on the engines, not too bad, there's a bit of raised and recessed detail there. But it is pretty basic, and I think that's going to be um, just what it is. At least it's there, though, at least it has an engine, there's some kits out there that don't. Of these style of cars um so it is there so i suppose it is a plus but it is screaming out for a detail upset so i would have liked to have got one but like i say we'll do this one out of the box and then next time around i'll grab another we'll try and find a different scheme or something for it um hopefully somebody will release them or if i dig deeper i can find them um and we'll do it a whole hog right so old glass let's have a look we've got a few marks and scratches on there there's a little bit of distortion on the side windows Probably not going to show for you, but you can see the scratches just there. But that's just going to be picked up in the bag. Uh, the headlight glass, very complex shape. And actually really well done. You can see this here. They're really well done, actually, to be fair. And the windscreen. While they're not the most optically clear glass I've seen, especially from Tamiya, it is more than adequate more than adequate very nice a little bit of distortion a little bit of haziness through the headlights look good everything looks good so yeah no real issues there certainly not the worst i've seen but definitely showing its age a little bit there not too bad at all yeah a little bit of uh the clarity is not as good as modern day stuff is what i'll say but still good seen a lot worse in the past I need a knife, let's open this bag up. There we go, we've got the four tyres. So we've got four poly caps. As usual, we're putting our wheels on, pretty standard. I'll just grab two of the wheels. Um, so no markings on the side. Big old seams through the middle. So give those a whiz over with a seam remover and a sander. Um, and they'll be gone in no time at all. Um, so yeah, round rubber tyres. Not much to talk about really. Once these seam, there's got to be some decals or is there's Michelin markings for them. They'll be fine. You'll deal with those in no time at all. Lickety split. They'll be seam free and ready for fitting. Polycaps, obviously don't lose those. They're quite important. Head on over to www.umpretail.com and help support mine and Lee's business because without alternate modeling products, there would not be any international scale modeler and all the videos we put out there and the Facebook page and the forum we run. We stock loads and loads of modeling products, including all our own products of our Apex Airbrush, our pigments, primers, sanders, thinner and cleaner tools, our wonderful storage system, polish system, and weathering washes. We also sell modeling tools, paints, model kits, glues, solutions, fillers, weathering products, aftermarket, and of course, international scale modeler merchandise and gift cards. And all orders made before 12 midday get next day delivery in the UK, and international orders are shipped within 48 hours. Then we'll get on to our PE. So let's get this out of here. So there is a bit of a metal rod there that'll be for the antenna can you see it just here i'm not going to get that out because i'll end up losing it but i will grab the pe sheet and we'll have a look so not bad pe quite thin no idea where a lot of this goes another side of the spoiler we've got grills seat belts which i'll probably replace with my own to be honest maybe we'll see actually because we're going to use the blue ones don't we so maybe we will go with these PE is really nice. Quite a generous amount of PE for a Tamiya kit. They can be quite stingy Tamiya sometimes. 
Um, but there's actually quite a bit there to be fair. So actually a nice addition to get with the kit. Um, so P didn't come with the original boxing, but I know it came with the 2008. It's the exact same P set by the look of it. I'm just going to have a double check and make sure the original one didn't, but I highly doubt it did. It certainly doesn't show that it does. Um, so yeah, nice addition to get. Always good to get in a kit. Um, as to our decent decals and a mass set, always a bonus to get some nice high quality decals. Uh, the likes of Cartograph can't really ever go wrong with, to be honest. I bag didn't want to open for some reason. There we go. So we've got a nice pre cut mass set, which Tamiya does with their cards, but their aircraft you got to cut it yourself. Never understand that, but hey, just the way it is. So that's for the side and front screen, inside and out. So nice addition to get. I do have another aftermarket set of windscreen decals, but I won't be using them because they'll be terrible compared to those. We've got the tire markings there. So there's the, the wet reverse transfers, which are a bit of a pain to do from Tamiya. I'll show how to do those in my video. And the decals themselves, which from Cartograph, will be absolutely fantastic. So not a huge amount of decals. We need to pick which car we're going to do. No, we've got no idea yet which one we're even going to pick, but the decals, typical car graph, they'll be lovely, they'll go down, no problems whatsoever. Got the four Michelin markings there, the Mercedes markings, three different numbers, three different cars to pick from. Some visor for the uh, windscreen. So yeah, great. Always nice to get good decals, especially with like Satami, where the kits are top notch. Yet yeah, the decals can really, really let them down. Even on newer kits, you've got to be careful. Um, so it's always nice to see that cartograph label on the box to know that you can pretty much kind of rely on the decals rather than worry about them. That's not going to go in there. We'll do that later. Uh, and then we've got the kind of sticky back paper. So it isn't cloth. Now I'm pretty sure I've got blue material and I'll just... I don't know, should we use that? It'd be quite good to use that, wouldn't it, in the video? Quite good to show me using that. So they're going to have to be cut out with a knife uh, and then folded around. I'm assuming it's self-adhesive. It is. It is a sticker. So, yeah, flap it round. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll give it a go. Maybe we'll give it a go and use those. But still nice to get in the kit. Along with the PE, it's, it's a nice detail to add to the kit. It really, really is. Right, so that's all the kit gone through. It looks good. It's simple. Shouldn't be too much of a, a long build, but it looks like it'd be pretty decent. So not too bad at all. So on the front of the uh, instructions, as usual, a bit of info about the kit. If you want to read it in English, uh, German, French, or Japanese, you can knock yourself out. Um, so if you want to pause it, you can read it. You want to pause the bot, but you can read that as well if you're foreign. There we go, and if we open it up, standard read before assembly instructions. Uh, don't be cutting yourself or you know juggling cats while you're building the model. Just random stuff like that. We've got the paint call outs there. Um, still mostly in the X and XFs, with the addition of some LP colours over here now. Obviously, because Tammy's moved on to lacquers. Uh, and TS29, blah blah blah. Recommended tools, how to Applied tire decals, so it tells you down here how to do those. Uh, cutting parts from the sprue, masking stickers, and instant cement. So if you've never built a model before, yeah, you might want to read those. If not, I won't worry about it too much. Start off with the chassis. So this is where it'd be uh, like a composite carbon, is it? So if you're going to go to carbon job, that's the way to do. If not, we've got to paint it. So we'll probably just mask and paint it, to be honest, on this one. Suspension arms in place. Uh, radiator. What have we got there? We've got the toe and eye there as well, PE. So it doesn't actually give us. Yes, it does. So you look for the super glue marker there, that thing, and it's got the number of the PE next to it. So it does define where the PE goes. Uh, we've got the poly caps into the hubs and the discs section, steering rod, engine, needs masking off in a multitude of places. And assembling, rocker covers, suspension again, 
drive shafts, brakes, getting all that assembly into the engine, into the chassis, sorry. And then moving on to the bulkhead. So quite a bit to add there, a bit of detail. Uh, a ticker there into coolers. Suspension again, the suspension arms, making the seat belt to see how this looks. It's pretty simple to be fair. Yeah, we'll give that a go with the paper. If it goes wrong, we'll just use the uh, the ribbon. Cut off pre molded seat belt parts. Excellent. That'll be fun. Thanks, Tamia. That'll be real fun. That's going to be a chisel jobby, that one. Going to make holes for the belt as well. You don't want to do the belts, you could just use the pre molded ones and paint them on, but they won't look as good. And then all the parts inside of the uh, cockpit as well, all need masking off and uh, painting in different colours. Attaching the cockpit to the bulkhead, rear suspension assembly, dashboard, steering wheel, getting the exhaust headers in, manifolds, the turbos. Uh, I'm assuming that's the intake on top. And then we're onto our wheels, tyres. Just trying to see. Okay, so it gives us eight of those tyre markings, so you get two goes at each one. So that's nice. I thought it was going to be doubled up, but it mustn't be. No, it's not. Okay, so I've got spares of those. More PE for the top as well. So you're going to have to pay attention for the PE. Make sure you don't miss it out. Onto the body, you're going to get bits that need gluing in place. You're going to have to figure out these need doing before or after painting. Parts like this are going to be after because they're a different colour. And then obviously the windscreen goes on from the outside, as do the side windows. So I would test fit those as well before you commit to painting them or gluing them in place, make sure everything fits. Being town here, it more than likely will fit absolutely perfect. Uh, get the window wiper in, the refueling uh, cap surrounds there as well. Obviously, different variants have different things on them. So C is that. Okay, I'm not sure why option C has different colorings on the um, hinge pins. And then spoiler attachment going on at the back. That's all as one unit. So it's calling for carbon on the spoiler. I reckon that spoiler will be carbon. So I think we will carbon the spoiler because it's hardly visible. I think that'd be a good one to do. Got plastic parts on the spoiler mounts. Okay, must be because of the complexity of the shape. And then. We've got other components on the front. So like this, you have to make sure that's glued in place for your paint. Then you've got your different callouts for your numbers. Each car has different wind mirrors. So I really like the green ones. One of them's got green on it. So which one's that? Pure yellow. Oh, it's got yellow ones. I really like the yellow ones, so I would probably go with option C. No idea which car that is, but I just really like the yellow wing mirrors. Or we've got fluorescent TS36, fluorescent red, or X2, which is white, which is boring. So I think we'll either go with A or C, so the yellow or the fluorescent red. Just because I like the funky colour showing up on the silver, that, that's one of the ones we're going to pick. So we'll pick which one it is. Then we've got our engine cover there. And that just pushes over the top, should fit okay. Uh, and then um, some covers there as well, which are PE. Where are they? Oh, yeah, there they are there. Okay, so they're going to need bending in shape, rolling. And then patents and markings. Okay, not the most specific of these. So A, B, and C, they've got the different call outs for any decals that are different. Pretty straightforward, really. Assembly looks pretty straightforward. Painting and that. It's going to be difficult in areas because some of it's going to need masking off. Um, the decaling doesn't look too complex. Like I said, I think we'll carbon that rear wing underneath because I think it'll look nice to do. It's a highly visible part. And if anything else is highly visible, it'll be carbon. I think I might do that as well. Other than that, that's it, really. Nothing much else. Painting's on the back. Uh, plenty of decals. So plenty of info on how to build. Um, I wouldn't pick this as a kit for a beginner, but uh, it looks good. Let's go back to me and have some final thoughts. Okay, then there we go. So, yeah, it's an older kit, uh, 31 years old. Definitely knocking on a bit, but looks good to me. 
few hints and wisps of flash here and there, which you're going to pick up off an older kit. Um, but that's the only real negative of the kit. The glass isn't the best, I will admit that. Um, modern day Tamiya glass is just top notch, absolutely crystal clear. And there are imperfections in this, you can see it a little bit, but it's much better than the likes of, say, 30 year old Rebel glass. So it just shows you how far ahead of the game Tamiya were back then and even now on their older kits. Considering how many times this kit's probably been molded over the years, those uh, molds must be shown some signs of wear. Um, so, yeah, it, it's testament to the quality of Tamiya. Not that expensive a kit, $37.99 for myself and the Ultimate Modeling Products. So, we've got a few of them in stock. If you fancy one, you can build along with me. We've got them in stock. Go on over there and have a look. Um, and I think for the money, it's decent. You get a decent fret of PE with it. We're getting good cartridge graph decals. We're getting the material for the seat belt. And we're getting a good quality kit. And like I said through the review, the older boxings of this kit are going for extortionate money now. Um, as most kits do when they go out of production. So, yeah, for $37.99 with the PE, with the uh, cartograph decals, it's a good price, I think. I think it really is. It looks like it's going to be an interesting build. It's screaming for a detailed upset, a full, like, Hobby Design, Studio 27, whatever. Uh, I can't find them anywhere at the minute. I'm hoping they'll get re-released, but I would have thought they'd been done by now. Whether they've been done and I've missed them, I don't know. I think maybe we need to have a good hunt around see if we can find any. Um, but yeah, I think out the box is the way to go on this one. So stay tuned. This should be a uh, part one should be up very soon. Uh, we'll deal with the bodywork that they're all painted up, decaled, and cleared. And uh, yeah, hopefully you'll enjoy the build. So thanks for watching today. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a Patreon me link in the description down below, and a PayPal me link as well. Uh, check out Natasha Scum on the Facebook page and forum, umpretail.com, where, as I say, we've got these kits in stock. And a lot of the products I use in my videos, paints, primers, kits, tools, you name it, we've got it over there. Go over and give us a bit of support. Um, check out my Paul ISM Facebook page as well, where all my personal modern work is shared. And go look at the Live the Bench page, off our Hangout group, and the ISM GB page as well. Everything I've just mentioned is linked in the description down below, as well as a big long list of everything I use in my videos from cameras, computers, uh, tools, glues, everything. There's a big list. There's a link to uh, a post over on the forum that's got a massive link of everything I use. And there we go. If you've got the kit, if you've built it in the past, which I'm sure a few of you will have that will be watching, uh, let me know what you thought of the kit, any problems at all. Um, and, yeah, looking forward to building this one. So, hopefully... We'll have a part up of this uh, early next week sometime. And we can really get going with this build. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed the review. Not the most in-depth review because there's not a huge amount to look at. It's a Tamiya kit. There's not much to pick out on those. Uh, but it's more of a formality than anything. So thanks for watching today. I will catch you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.